for the following exercises. Given each set of information, find a linear equation satisfying the conditions, if possible. All right. So uh, essentially what I have to do is take this given information and try to see if I can create a linear equation out of it. So in other words, what we can, how we can think of this is um, first, if this notation is a little unfamiliar, we have a whole playlist on function notation. Uh, check that out. I think you'll find it very helpful. So basically, um, what I'm going to do is just simply write this down, and I'm going to tell you what these mean. Okay. Remember that this generally has the uh, notation of f of x is equal to y. So basically, this is your y value. Okay. And this right here will be your x value. So knowing that, I know that this actually represents a point, interestingly enough. You just have to know this notation. All right. And that's where the other videos will help. So if I know that my x value is negative 5 and my y value is negative 4, that means that I can write a coordinate, right? I, can, I have a coordinate pair. So it's negative 5 comma negative 4. Cool. Guess what I can do over here as well? I can do the same thing. This is y, and then this value in here will be the x. So what would that coordinate point be? Or what would that coordinate pair be, I should say? So it's going to be 5 comma 2. Now, I have two points, right? I have two points, and from two points, I might be able to uh, create a linear uh, equation out of it. Now, the way to do this is going to be to uh, first calculate the slope, if you can plug it in, right? If you can plug it into the slope formula. So I know I can plug it into the slope formula. Remember, the slope formula is down here, that the slope, uh, actually, let me just write slope formula. And it is simply y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, so we simply, we have two coordinates. I'll call this my first coordinate, this my second coordinate. And if I do that, this would be the, remember, x is always first. This would be my x1, and this would be my y1. And then that means this would be my x2, and this would be my y2. Now that I define them, I can simply use my slope formula, right, to find the slope. So the slope will be equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Let's solve for the slope. So m, plug them in. y2 is 2. y1 will be negative 4. Careful with the double negative. x2 is 5 minus then x1 is negative 5. Careful with the double negative again. So remember, when you calculate the slope now, this double negative is really positive. So it's really 2 plus 4, which is 6. And this is really 5 plus 5, right, which is 10. So the slope is going to be 6 over 10, or a.k.a. 3 fifths. All right? So here's the slope. Now that we have the slope, okay, I'm going to move this over just a tad. Now that we have the slope, move this over a little bit. Now that we have the slope, we can actually find the equation of the line. All right? And I have a bunch of steps down here, right? Basically, I'm following them, okay? I calculated the slope. Right, first I identify what I was given. So based on this information, right, I was given two points. Then I calculated the slope from those two points. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in one of the points that I have, either one of these two. I don't care which one you do. Both going to be the same. Into my mx plus b formula to find the y-intercept, and then we're good to go. All right? So now let's do the last step here. Let's write y is equal to mx plus b. We know what y is, any any particular point. I'm going to choose the second one because they're positive, right? Who likes to work with negative values? No one. So, 5. What's the slope? Well, that we just found. The slope was 3 halves, right? So 3, you can also plug it as a, as a, as a decimal if you like, right? That'd be 0. 0.6 times the x value. And I already messed this up, right? <laughs> y is not 5. Y is 2. So my apologies there. So y is 2. And if you notice, my voice is just hitting puberty. So m will be 3 fifths. x will then be 5. Plus, then I don't know what the y-intercept is, but this is the whole point. Look, you have one equation with only one unknown. You love that because you can solve it. Okay? Notice when you multiply these two together, the 5s would cancel. So it's basically 2 is equal to 3 plus b. Right? Now, solve for b. You simply got a minus the 3 on over, 
and we we find now, and I'm just going to move this up a little bit, we find now that b is equal to negative 1. I know that doesn't look satisfying because it looks like it's in the wrong spot, so I'm just going to write b is equal to negative 1. So we have everything we need. Remember, in order to, and one of the major principles, in order to uh, find a linear equation, remember the general form of a linear equation is y is equal to mx plus b. But in order to find an equation for a linear line, you must know the slope and the y-intercept. That was the whole goal behind what we were doing. Okay, So I found the slope. I found the y-intercept. Voila, now I can create my equation. y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 1. And there you go. There's the equation. All right, That would be the equation of that straight line. So now what we can do is we can basically now do the same procedure for this one. Remember, they gave us two points, basically. This is your y value, and this is your x value. So we have negative 1, comma 4 is one point, and then this is the same thing. Here's another y value, and here's an x value. So x is going to be 5, and y is 1. Now, it does not matter to me which one you call You know your first point point, your second point. I'm going to call this my x1, this one my y1, and therefore, this will be my x2, and this one will be my y2. Now what I want to do, remember, if the whole goal is to find a linear equation, that means I have to know my slope and my y-intercept. Okay? So let's find the slope first. So the slope, m, is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Now we can basically start plugging in the values. So y2 I defined as 1 y1 I defined as 4, x2 I defined as 5, minus then x1 I defined as negative 1, careful with the double negative. So 1 minus 4 is going to be a negative 3, and the double negative here on the bottom with the 1 is really a plus, right? So it's 5 plus 1, which is 6. Simplifying this on down now, we realize that we're going to get negative 1 half. And you can leave it that way, or you can plug it in as the decimal point, negative 0.5. Now that I know the slope, I know m, but I don't know b yet, right? So that's the next step. So in order to solve for b now, I can indeed use the formula y is equal to mx plus b. Since I found m, I can plug that in. And then the y and the x, I can use any point I was given. It doesn't matter to me which one you choose. You can use either one, and we're going to get the same answer. So I'm going to choose the one that's all positive down there, okay? So the y is 1. The slope, as we just found, is negative 1 half. The x value here was 5, okay? And then plus the unknown b. We love this. One equation, one unknown. Let's just do some algebra. So this is 1 is equal to basically negative 5 over 2 plus b, right? Negative 5 over 2 is about 2 and a half, right? Not about, it is. So we can simply add now the 5 over 2 to the left-hand side. And you can think about this as far as like, you know, if this is 2.5 and, and I'm adding 1 to it, what would it be? 3.5. And, and the other way to write 3.5, if I want to keep it in fractional form, is 7 over 2. Because right? 2 goes into 7 3.5 times. So it doesn't matter to me, again, if you do the decimal or the fraction. But we realize that we have a value for b. I know that looks strange, so let's just plug... Let's just put b on this side, and b is equal to 7 over 2. Now, lo and behold, we have our x, excuse me, we have our m, and we have our b. So now the formula will be b, 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 y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 7 halves. Okay, or negative 0.5x plus 3.5. Doesn't matter. So guys, hopefully this helps. If it did, help us out if you can. Hit that subscribe button. We've got more videos coming out to you. And if you found this helpful, some of your friends might also find it helpful, especially if they're taking the same class, okay? And even if you have some other friends, right? We have a whole bunch of videos out there. You, they might find it uh, helpful. Thank you so much.